Now, the rest of the story. Well, okay, welcome to the field. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make this video because I feel like if I don't, it'll never happen. And it does help me make my case as to why we are going ahead and doing the upgrade to the planter like we are. And what I wanna show is a couple things. Um, number one, this is no-tilled into soybean stubble, which means the ground wasn't worked at all with, with the disc or anything. It was planted directly into it. And the only tillage it's had was the cultivator because that is why you're not seeing any standing soybean stubble throughout here because I came through and I side dressed with liquid 32 with the cultivator and I didn't get carried away moving a whole lot of dirt. I was just really skimming the ground, just really trying to cover up that liquid to make sure that it stays attached to the soil. And in no-till, especially with our corn planter, I was having a hard time getting the, the planter consistently into the ground. So the ground was so hard, you hear guys say it was like concrete, that the brand new, like new, I mean, they're, this is their second season on them, seed disc openers uh, weren't able to consistently keep the seed depth that I had the planter set at. We were planting at two inches deep, which on our worked ground, it actually the worked ground looks better as far as seeing seed to soil contact and emergence. I mean, I don't have as much of the, well, I had a stock here I wanted to show you. Um, where I was having issues, that's probably a skip. Oh, right here where it wasn't getting the seed into the ground. So unlikely I had that much of a skip. And what I was finding pretty consistently through this field and some of our other no-till fields was that it was putting the seed basically just under the surface and it really didn't give that plant a decent chance to germinate. So going through with having the hydraulic downforce on the planter, well, here's an even better spot. So. I don't care what kind of a, a flex ear you have on a plant, um, an ear's not going to flex enough to make up for that gap. And I'm looking for a picket fence stand. And when you have a picket fence stand with every ear consistently spaced apart, or every plant consistently spaced apart, all at the same depth that gives you the same or as close to um, the same day emergence as possible your ears will be straight across the whole row you see the inconsistency we have here just within three plants and I'm willing to bet emergence and germination was a huge contributor as to why these plants the ears are all placed differently on them. And you guys will see that farmers' fields that have the, the planters with all that technology on them, I mean, vacuum, electronic drive, um, the seed belt delivery system where it's taking the seed directly from the vacuum meter and putting it right into the soil. Um, you, your stand is just so much healthier. And we've been told um, 15 bushels across the board just upgrading the planter and I'm not saying that we have a crop failure this year as a matter of fact I think we're looking at a very good year this year but until it's through the planter or through the combine and across the scale I mean you just don't know I mean we are looking at tar spot here for those of you who are wondering what all this is uh, the farm was hit with fungicide we did do a test strip that didn't get any fungicide on it and that's essentially what tar spot does it shuts down the plant and the ears are mature i had a field i looked at earlier that it is it is right at black layer and with the threat of a potential frost tonight i'm not really all that worried about it and 
some of these ears across this field are are actually fairly dry. I was just told that a hybrid that was planted down where I live, not not actually at our farm, but another guy that's harvesting that same hybrid planted a week after we planted ours, or similar week, um, it's running at 22% moisture. So we are really close to harvest. Um, soybeans first, preferably, but then switching into corn and it really should move along really well. I mean, I don't like doing yield checks. It's a good way to set yourself up for disappointment, but the weather's been good. I mean, other than the planter spacing has been a little disappointing, a lot disappointing. Um, the ears are good, the ears are nice. I just wish that every plant that I aimed for was supposed to be here. Now, I'm aiming in this particular field, I planted at 38,000 seeds per acre, so even having a little bit of a stand loss, I still have some pretty healthy yield potential. And the ears definitely seem to show it. Find a lot of 16, 18, and 20 around ears this year, which 16 is pretty much the norm. But the greenness, thanks largely to the tar spot, is pretty well out of the plant. The stalks themselves are pretty healthy. I'm not worried about the ears falling off or anything, but you know, a late season weather event, you hear it all the time across the country, different things can happen, but I think the plant health is gonna be healthy enough to at least get us, it'll get us to harvest. And I mean, I know everybody's looking forward for for harvest videos. I'm, I'm gonna do what I can, when I can, the best I can, so. I really usually don't like doing this too often, but the other concern outside of everything with the, the planter and the stand, a little bit of stand issues, uh, wildlife damage is becoming a thing. It's a very real thing this year. The raccoons on part of this field are actually bothering in ways they've never bothered before. Uh, might have to either do some trapping and introduce them to Smith & Wesson, but I mean, that's that's a pretty good ear when I can't even get my fingers around it. So the kernel size is pretty impressive. We had weather-wise, I'm not bragging. Um, I don't need to. It's just that out west, I know they're dry, drought, and for what few of the posters that comment on Ag Talk anymore are saying. Even in the fields that look nice, they um, they kind of fell flat. I mean, 10 to 20 bushels less than APH, and I'm looking for at least APH, if not significantly more. So you try not to set yourself up for disappointment, but I'm really looking at this is going to be one of one of our better years, and that's just how it's looking, believe it or not. Even with the the wind damage the last two years. Believe it or not, we actually had really good years those years too. It was just more of a challenge to get the, the ears to the to the combine. So well, I gotta head out of here. Thanks for tuning in guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to stay tuned for the har harvesting action, harvesting fun. I mean, it's pretty much just right around the corner.